Welcome back to Rashura Kenshin Anime Review. This is part 7B. I don't know if you can see me because my webcam apparently is not exactly going very bright enough for some strange reason. I don't know why. I hope you all can hear me. This is our viewing, the last live action film to be released for Rashura Kenshin. Released roughly about four years ago. Rashura Kenshin The Legend Ends. Picking up like not long after the events of the previous film, Kayo Inferno. Excuse me. This one sees begins with a flashback to something that kind of happened in the manga and anime of how Kenshin first met his master. Of course, you do get a chance to see his master in present day, roughly 15 years later. Now, Kenshin is supposed to be 29 right now. Yeah, he's supposed to be 29. He's roughly one year older than he is in the manga, which, fine, whatever. And here, he's training with his master. Of course, he doesn't get to turn, he gets to get, learn that particular move. Though, the thing is, you don't see him actually showing off the move until much later. So, you get a chance to move briefly. The special move is supposed to hit all the points that, that he's supposed to hit uh, for a, a swordsman to hit. Yeah. It's not really much later. Though, of course, Shishio does something he actually never did to the manga or the anime. Actually made it to Tokyo and actually fired on Tokyo. Yeah, him and the Purgatory, though it's never called the Purgatory. It just referred to as the black ship or the ironclad ship, but it is the Purgatory. That is the ship that he definitely had. Though, this one actually has, like, believe it or not, I don't remember this. As far as I can tell, I don't remember ironclads really even had these things. It looks like it had twin gun, twin cannon guns on it, which, as far as I know, Ironclads never had this at all. I do not know why in the world they have it for in here, but I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the designers of the of the live action version of the of the Purgatory probably mistake the Ironclad ship for a a destroyer. I'm not kidding. It fires like a destroyer. Yeah, it damaged the town. Prime Minister comes in, uh, who actually is no friend of Kenshin's. And he uh, gets to meet Shishio, and Shishio brings out a table, which they, they see this table a little later. He has what looks like, I don't know, what looks like maybe very raw steak, I think it is. I'm not, it could be sushi. Uh, as for what they say, what this meat is, all I say was Western meat. They don't see what type of meat it is. Plus, also in this scene, we get a chance to, I was so happy to finally see this live action. Shishio's sword, uh shooting out flames out of it, which is something that it did do both in the manga and the anime, which I was so happy. I finally got a chance to see that. Because it was unknown from the previous film if his sword could do that, but here, yeah, his sword could definitely do that. Uh-huh. Yep. His sword could definitely do it. Um, what else? Uh, hmm. Let me think. Um, hmm. What else? I'm trying to think what else that. Well, yeah. Um, Kenshin got a chance to fight Aoshi near a bridge, even though both manga and anime, the, the, when Kenshin and Aoshi first fought, fight, they fought in a library, not like out in the open, which they changed that. It's fine. Of course, it kind of had the same result. Basically, Aoshi barely surviving, rethinking his stuff, though he actually did something, Aoshi did something he never did in the manga anime. He actually hit Masao. He kicked her in the gut. Yep. Though, from what I can tell, I think Masao later forgave him for doing that later on because they're seen together at the end. Yep. So, yeah. What else? Um, the old man actually dies. Yeah, he looks like he actually did die. Even on the manga and the anime, he never did die. I guess they decided to have him die of his wounds, which is okay. At least it was a decent death. Though he didn't have his eye patch covering him. Um, oh yeah, I should point out though, two of the ten swords, uh, yeah, two of the ten swords do pop in this movie. One is the blind swordsman. He pops up for roughly like two minutes and gets killed by by Saito. Yeah, he gets killed by Saito off screen. I'm like, okay, you look like you're gonna fight him, and he gets killed off screen. Uh, the fallen monk. Aoki, he shows up in here as well, though he's not identified as Aoki. I can tell by looking at him, he's definitely him, especially the whole ash on his eyes. Same attire, same build. Yeah, it's Aki the Destroyer. Even though he's not credited, it's just, oh yeah, we have this fallen monk. Even though he's wearing 
the same exact attire as the fallen monk in the manga. And in case you ask, uh, th does it do that famous punch that actually breaks rocks? Nope. Doesn't do that at all in here. I mean, that's the disappointing thing about the Ten Swords in live action. They don't. The only one actually that's actually had a good amount of time to actually could fight was a sword collector. Yeah, the blind swordsman. Seen kill a couple people, then he gets killed by Saito off screen. The monk has a pretty decent fight with, with Sato, and he gets defeated via kind of the same way he battled the other guy two movies back by hitting him with kitchen, with, uh, kitchen stuff. Yep. Let's see, what else? I'll talk about the, the final fight in a minute. Um, Yeah, basically, Cishio wants Kenshin arrested and executed for crimes they committed during the previous era. And Kenshin takes a little while to come back. He does eventually come back. Uh, when he goes back to the dojo, he puts on his classic manga attire, the red top and white bottom. Yeah, white pants, he puts that on. Briefly battles the police, taken straight to headquarters. He's taken trek to uh, what looks like the prime minister, who is ISO for some reason. Yeah, ISO. He says that the execution before, though it's actually staged. and Apparently, Saito, uh, Sato, Yuriko, and Caillou knew nothing about that. Uh, Caillou survived, and she's apparently found off-screen. I'm like, was there a deleted scene here? Yeah, there's many, like, there's a few plot holes in this film that I never bothered to explain. Yeah, there's one actually later on, a really big one. Oh, yeah, and how she is treated by Masao, and, and she says... That uh, your life belongs to me, to Grandpa, and the group. Yep. That's why I think the Grandpa's dead. Yeah, she calls him Grandpa, even though he's actually sort of like her sensei in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But from what I can tell from that particular scene, she forgave him. Even though it's never stated. But, yeah. She forgave him, despite the fact she's like... As for how old she's supposed to be at this point in live action, in the anime manga she was six, she's 16, and how is she supposed to be 25? She looks like she's about 20. I am not really sure how old Masao is supposed to be in this particular movie, because one thing, they don't state her age at all. Yeah, the only character's age they do state is probably Kenshin's, and he's supposed to be 29. Let's see, the actress who plays Masao is, uh, she's 22, so that means when she did this film, she was, uh, when this film came out, she was roughly 18. Yeah, she was 18 when this film came out. Okay, fine. So maybe she's about the same age as the actress that plays her. I don't know, because they don't bother to age, name her age. Excuse me. Um, yeah. And then when they look like they're going to execute him, he, like, it's free, and a Big Humongous actually plays out, and it's probably one of the best scenes in the whole film. Yeah, Kenshin, Saito, uh, Saito and Sato have this big brawl with with uh, with uh, Cisho's men. Even the Imperial Army comes in, <coughs> and then um, Saito and Kenshin go on a boat with with some Imperial Army troopers, and they storm Cisho's ship, which is something that never happens in manga. I thought this was a really cool addition to the film. The fact they actually did this, which awesome, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they storm the ship, and they fight a bunch of of uh, Shisho's men. Kenshin fights Shisho's right hand man, the the guy who they say is the son of a concubine. Yeah, they barely explain the guy, anyways. So he fights him, and he breaks his sword. Though in the last film, uh, he broke uh, he, this guy broke Kenshin's sword in the previous film. Though he got a new sword, anyways. Mm -hmm. And after his fight with him, he has a fight with Shishio, and then it gets it. And then, uh, then Saito comes and fights him. Then Sato, and then Aoshi, completely out of nowhere, as for how he got to the ship. And same thing with Saito. As for how these two guys got to the ship, never explained or even shown at all. It's like, okay, you have Saito appear on the ship for some unexplained reason. How he got there? No idea. Aoshi comes completely out of nowhere, and him, Aoshi, Saito, Sato, and Kenshin all have this big brawl with, 
was she showed probably the best scene, the probably the best scene, best fight of the whole film. And then of course he gets defeated by uh, he gets overheated, and he dies, and they all pretty much all four of them leave the ship. Now unlike in the manga, it's implied Sa- Saito may have actually died, even though he was, his legs were damaged. Even though in the film his legs were never damaged, and he managed to get back to shore no problem. The fact he's he's wounded. Abby gets reunited, and the minister declares, uh, Batosai dead because he was, he had the, uh, Shisha wanted the, Batosai, the slasher, yeah, they call him a slasher in here, yeah, they don't call him an assassin, they call him, uh, an assassin, they call him a slasher for some reason, I have no idea why, so, after Shisha was defeated, he, uh, the Prime Minister declares, Batosai the Slayer dead, and acknowledges him at Kenshin Himura, and all the troopers on, on the Imperial Army troops are on the beach, all salute Kenshin, Saito, Saito, and Aoshi as heroes of Japan. And then pretty much the film kind of ends with them back at the dojo. And it's kind of applied the way the film ends is that Kenshin is proposing to Caillou. Even though in reflections, Caillou proposed to Kenshin. Yeah, it's kind of a really, like, if you wonder what the answer is, we're probably never going to find out because they're going to replace the actress. Yeah. They're going to replace the actress because she got married and she's pregnant. I am not kidding. Yeah, because apparently she's apparently, uh, apparently there's a breach of her contract where she's not allowed to get married or at least have any kids for some reason. I have no idea. Oh yeah, and the penalty for breaking contract in Japan is a billion yen, which is like $9.6 million in U.S. currency. Now, I'm not really sure how contracts work over in Japan. But last time I checked, you're not supposed to be accused of suit for breach of contract just because you got married. And an actress, if they get married, and, well, one thing, that's fine. I'm sure everybody's happy that fact she got married and happy she's pregnant. But removing her as the actress just because she got pregnant? Seriously? This is stupid. This is this is as stupid as all what in WWE uh, decided to fire Dom Marie. Uh, this was, I don't know, like over a decade ago. Yeah, they fired her. They, they fired her because she got pregnant. I am not kidding. That's basically what they did. This kind of sounds the same thing. Oh, yeah, we have a pregnant woman. Let's just fire her instead of actually giving her time to actually have her baby. <laughs> I don't know what's, what, what, how, how studios do stuff in Japan, but, yeah. From my perspective, that's stupid. Suing her breached a contract because she got pregnant. So stupid. Yeah, good film, but bad what happened to the actress. I mean, I'm happy the fact she got married and she's going to be a mother. Fine. But her being sued breached a contract because she did those two things? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and the guy she married, uh, she he's a member of a, boy, of a Japanese boy band called Exile. Not kidding. Look it up. Though the actress herself, she's 24. And the guy she married, 33. Not kidding, I looked it up myself. But otherwise, though, fantastic film. What do I rate all these three films? I give all three films all a... uh, The first two, I give both a 9.5 out of 10. This one, I give a 9 because there's two plot holes. Like I said, how how she got on the ship, how she and Sato got on the ship... That is never explained or even shown. And what was the other one? Oh yeah, not show, uh, showing like oh yeah, they said that, that Caillou was found by some random guy at the beach. As for who this guy is, no idea. Absolutely no idea. Also, Caillou and Yanko do not meet Kenjin's master in this film at all. Nope, in the manga and anime they do. Here, they never meet. The only person that th- that Kenshin's master meets is Masao. That's it. Yeah, that's really it. Though they do change it with the final about to take place near Tokyo instead of near uh, Kyoto. That's fine. It's an adaptation. It's a live-action adaptation. There's no big changes like that, but... Saito is a little bit different than he is in the, in the manga. In the manga and the anime, he's a little more arrogant. Here, he's... Still a bit arrogant, but not like over the top arrogant like he was depicted there. But I gotta say, all the actors did a fantastic job from what I've seen. And I did notice in this film he did have the three loose hairs thing that he does have 
he, the three hairs like look, look like kind of like long like like uh, claws. Yeah, he does have the actor that does have those in this film. Though I didn't notice, I did not notice some in the first two films. In this film, he does have them. I don't know. Maybe he got a complaint from the writer about that. I don't know, but I'm happy he did that. It's a minor thing, but it's fine. Otherwise, though, yeah, this is pretty much it for when it comes to Shuri Kenshin anime review. The only other time you might see me do a review for when it relates to the series is probably the two light novels for this series and Bashuda Rook. I'm gonna do. I'm hoping to do the review of the light novels of those soon because, well, that's all I love to go for these two series. Well, in the case of Kenshin, Shuri Kenshin just two light novels and. The Restoration Manga, which I'm only like five chapters in right now. Yeah, five chapters out of ten. Yep. Alright, so that's it for this one. Uh, stay tuned for whenever I get a chance to do the review of the Attack on Titan live action films soon. And and in case you're all wondering, why am I can't, why do I look like this? Why I look like I'm look like I'm a shadow? It's because my why my webcam is not exactly very bright at the moment. Though you can hear it perfectly fine. It's just that how my camera is. I apologize for that. Hopefully my next video that I record will be hopefully tomorrow. Hopefully it will not be like this. Please hope to God now, okay? So I'll see you on my next video. Bye.